Hello and welcome to Rathod's IES. Today in this session, we are going to see news analysis of 1st January 2024. So first of all, I wish you a very happy new year for all of you. And today in this class, we are going to see the current affairs. So first of all, we are going to see Delhi edition of Hindu and we are going to pick out the articles which are relevant from our examination point of view. So after picking out of articles, we are going to see in how many dimensions you can think about that topic. So that multi-dimensional study will be very helpful to write a good answer and even to write an essay with this multi-dimensional manner. So this interlinking of topics that we are going to study with this current affairs. Okay. So this is a very, very important. Okay. Many UPSC students or aspirants, so they don't know like how to read this current affairs. And many students who are beginner, they are facing problem with this current affairs. So how many of you are beginners and how many of you are facing problem in reading newspaper? Please let me know in the comment box. Okay, so that I will be further coming up with simplifying of topics. Okay, so here one more thing is we are also going to provide the notes of this class. So the notes you can download from the telegram channel. Link is given in the description box. Okay. So let's get started without wasting any time. So the first topic it is about US Navy sinks three Houthi vessels. Okay, so this to understand this article you need to know some background. Okay, so we are going to see the background first and later on we are going to come to the topic once again. So first this topic is talking about US and Houthis. Okay, how it is at US. So, what is the background? So, if you want to understand this background, why US is attacking this how it is vessels, first we have to see this Israel Palestine issue. Okay, Israel Palestine. So, actually, Palestine in Palestine we have Hamas. So, these are rebel groups. And these Hamas, they attacked Israel. In retaliation now, Israel is attacking Palestine. Okay, so this is the one issue. And now what is happening here is, US is supporting Israel. So US is supporting Israel. On another side, this Houthis. This Houthis. So they are Iran based and they are present in Yemen. They started supporting this palace and that is Hamas. So they started supporting this Hamas. So what is happening here is we have Mediterranean Sea and this Mediterranean Sea is connected to Red Sea. And this Red Sea is connected to Arabian Sea. So now recently Iran made a statement. So recently Iran made a statement that we are not going to allow the move or movement of these vessels in this Red Sea. So we are going to control this Bab El Mandak. So we are going to control this Bab El Mandak. So it is a narrow strait. But the fact is that Iran is not sharing boundary. But it said that we are going to control this Bab El Mandak and we don't allow the containers to pass through this Red Sea. So how, why this statement is given by Iran? Because it has support from Yemen. And Yemen is sharing boundary. So that through Yemen it want to control the movement of vessels in this Red Sea. And because of this what happened so many a times is how these they attack a number of vessels and even container ships. So container ships have been attacked by using drones. So recently Indian based ships and Indian, Indian people who are present in the ship they had been attacked. So because of that here, we have to even see what is the role of India. So India wants to increase 
security and even surveillance india wants to improve surveillance and security in this indian ocean region so you know that indian ocean region and pacific region is one of the important hot topic which is going on and many countries they want to increase their influence in this indo pacific region so because of this now western countries are looking towards india because india is sharing a direct boundary with this indian ocean region and even many a times here uk france and us they want to improve their or increase their influence in this indo pacific region and we are coming up with regional groupings also for that case so because of this increasing of security and surveillance so recently india increased navy so indian navy and even coast guard they are playing a very important role and today's newspaper there is one more article said that indian navy is recruiting some more equipment to improve security in this region okay so here we can connect this topic with different dimensions so what are those dimensions here so the first important dimension is so this topic it is interlinked with this israel palestine issue this is the first one and you have to know who are this how it is and how they are connecting with this israel palestine issue the second thing and the third thing here is you have to know about importance of red sea and babel mandap so this is the third thing and next one is you have to see like what is the role of india so this is the fourth thing and here you have to see why us is involved so these are the five important dimensions that you have to remember and even you can add one more dimension like attacking of the ships with the drones by this how it is so there are around six dimensions regarding this article and if you are a beginner if you have started newspaper reading on this january 1st you may not knowing about all these dimensions yes or no and even you have to do some work that is map of this red sea and bab el mandap and this bab el mandap is a very important choke point so why it is a concern because so most of the trade 13% of the world trade which will be moved towards this bab el mandap okay and one more dimension that you can also add here is yeah i forgot to set this so here we have red sea here we have mediterranean sea and we are connecting this red sea and and this is arabian sea normally this route which is used for the movement of containers and they will be reaching this mumbai port and even from here they are reaching this taiwan etc taiwan china etc so this area that is red sea so whenever this container ships are moving here so this how it is they are attacking that so here there is one more important route that we can use so we have to go for another route that is also called as rerouting so we can go for rerouting like rather than using of this route you can go to this cape of good hope and here to here we can go and here to here we can go so there are some problems here if you want to reroute this transport the first one is there is increased distance and next one is increased transportation cost increasing transportation cost and the third one is that will cause this increasing of price of oil that will leads to inflation in the countries and even that will increase the time to reach earlier through this route it will be taking 22 to 24 days and now it will take like 30 to 35 days okay increasing of time for transportation so these are the four problems regarding this rerouting so if you want you can make a note and even this diagram is very important so this is africa okay don't mean why i why i drawn like this okay like this so this is africa so i hope it is very much clear right so if you are 
understand in this topic and if you are a beginner and if you have a clear cut image so please say me hi okay clear and now let us move on to the next topic so next topic is aadhar linked pay made mandatory for mg narega's workers so here there are some keywords so keywords is aadhar linked payment system and next one is mg narega so please let me know how many of you are having bank accounts so everyone because you might be getting some scholarship or for example you will be getting free investment yes or no so you, you have to maintain the bank account so how many of you linked your bank account with aadhar please let me know so how many of you linked your bank account with aadhar so this article is saying that so whenever government is coming up with any scheme so it have to focus on transparency and accountability yes or no so i will be giving you the broad image regarding the schemes how how they will work so this is talking about mg narega okay so this scheme it is about mg narega so let us keep this aside for 2 minutes and let us see about what are the schemes so if we are talking about the broad structure of schemes so government will be implementing schemes why so in any country per se for example in any country we have different sections of people for example we have rich and we have poor So, if you are talking about our country, so we are following this parliamentary form of democracy, and it is a responsibility of government to uplift this poor people. That is the thing which said in our DPSP, Director Principles of State Policy. So, DPSP will guide the government regarding make of policies, schemes, etc. Yes or no? Are you connecting the points? So, here government will be collecting taxes from these rich people. for example direct tax so government is collecting the direct tax from the people who are rich who are earning more who are earning well and that taxes will be used by government to come up with policies or schemes that will uplift this poor people and so now for the upliftment of people government will be come up with some schemes so and it is a responsibility of the government to come up with providing of proper livelihood to this poor people so because of this government came up with this scheme called as mg narega scheme that is mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act so under this it is providing 100 days of guarantee work 100 days of guarantee work that to in rural areas and it includes unskilled work not skilled work that includes unskilled work and even through this scheme they want to create assets in the villages for example schools building of schools digging of canals coming up with phc that is primary health care centers like that so it is providing the employment to the rural people and even it is creating asset for the further sustainable development of villages so here till now under this mg narega government will be paying minimum wages it will be paying minimum wages to the people until now here panchayats plays a very important role gram panchayats so if anyone wants to join this scheme they have to go to panchayats and they have to register and within certain stipulated amount of time they will be getting employment and they will be getting card they will be getting card okay so this is the thing and if they want to get the salary they have to take that card to this panchayat and the panchayats will be giving the amount but now what happened so whenever money is going from people to people that means whenever there is human intervention is there so whenever there is human intervention that will leads to misuse misuse of money to decreases misuse of money 
and now in this governance we are focusing on accountability and transparency now we are focusing on accountability and transparency not only this accountability and transparency even we are focusing on decreasing of loopholes in the schemes so for that we are going for using of ICT information communication technology so we are using ICT and apart from that in that payment issues we are focusing on DBT so DBT is nothing but direct benefit transfer that means who are the benefited person so account to their account directly money will be credited Okay, so through that DBT mechanism, now MG Narega it wants to pay the salaries to the workers. Okay, so for that here, to link your bank account, we need Aadhaar. We need Aadhaar enabled payment system. So this is the background. Clear or not? Okay, so here you have to see what is Aadhaar based payment system and what are the advantage of that Aadhaar based payment system. So this is very very important. Okay, so these are some important dimensions. So how many dimensions we came up here? So first one is you have to know the facts. So from the facts you can get a prelims based question. And next one is you have to see like what is the scheme. And third one is you have to see like role of gram panchayats. And you have to connect this with provident governance from our ethics, that is accountability and transparency topic. And even you can connect one more topic here is how it will be helpful to achieve our sustainable development goals. Okay, so all these are very, very important. I hope it is very much clear, right? So if it is clear, please say hi. Okay, don't forget. Yeah, and next topic it is about... 16th Finance Commission. So, Penagaria to head 16th Finance Commission. So, here we have to see what is the 16th Finance Commission. So, if you have gone through your Lakshmi Kant book in your constitutional bodies, we, are, uh, we have studied about this Finance Commission. Yes or no? So, now let us see some important dimensions that you have to see from this article. So, you have to see what is this Finance Commission. So this finance commission is a very important topic from your prelims and as well as from your mains. So now let us see the dimensions. So you have to know some facts regarding this finance commission. For example, article 280 talks about this finance commission and you have to see who are the members and you have to see tenure, appointment process. And removal process and you have to see what are the functions so these are the very important things and you have to see from mains point of view what are the recommendations you have to see what are the recommendations of this finance commission and you have to see like the data of 15th finance commission so all these things are very important and you can expect both prelims and mains based question here okay so this is about this finance commission so this facts you can get directly from your polity lakshmi kant and this topic is important from gs paper to under polity and even this is important from GS paper 300 economy. So these are the dimensions that you have to remember. Clear or not? So this is about this front page. That's it. And if you move on. In the city page, I found nothing much relevant from our examination point of view. You can simply skip that paper.
Yeah, and in this page, you can see two important articles that is, Kerala may renew campaign for new Mulla Periyada. So here, what are the dimensions you have to see? You have to see about this. You have to say about this Mulla Periyar Dam on which river it was constructed and what is the issue. So this issue is between which states and you have to see what is the importance of this dam. So all these things are very important that is it nothing more nothing less. That topic is important from your geography from GS paper 1. Uh, next topic is silent wave of JN1 variant in twin cities in Bangalore. So, this article is talking about new variant of COVID-19. So, you have to see like what is this COVID-19 and what is this variant that is JN1 variant. So, here you can expect a question like recently JN1 variant is in news. It is related to, it is related to nothing but COVID-19. And you have to see in which areas there is a spread of this COVID-19 is happening now. Okay, that's it. And you have to see about some facts regarding this mutations. Okay, so why these new variants are coming up. And if you move on, you can go to this editorial page. So this article is very important that is about reading the tea leaves for 2024. So especially this article is talking about what are the dilemmas that we have. Okay, what is the dilemma that we have? So, I will be telling you some points. If you want, you can make a note. Okay, what are the dilemmas? So, I will be giving around 5 to 6 ideas. If you want, you can make a note. So, first one is Ukraine Russia issue. Whether this issue will be resolving in this 2024 or not, it is a big question. And next one is, many countries are coming forward to join NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization. So, this is some of the cause of concern for Russia. So, how to stop this? So, this is the second issue. And third one, it is about Israel-Palestine issue. Next one is Israel-Palestine issue. So, whether this two-state solution will bring peace or not. So, issue is whether this two-state solution will bring peace or not. So, this is a third important issue. And apart from this, you are having other dilemmas like trade war. And from India point of view, we are having India-China or Indo-China tensions. Indo-China tensions at LAC. So, from 2020 onwards, so there is no complete resolution across this LAC region. And from Indo-Pakistan side, the issue of terrorism and recent abrogation of Article 370 and Article 35A and Supreme Court said it is correct. So, we have to see what will be the future consequences and already there is increasing of uh, issues we are going on regarding this punch. And you can see about Indo-Bangladesh border issue. So, recently we studied the issue is human trafficking. <clears throat> so, new issue is human trafficking. And one more important issue is insurgency in Northeast. And migrants issue in Northeast. And you can also add about the issue called as communal violence. Communal violence in Manipur. And apart from this, we are having climate related changes. For example, so what are the climate related changes 
that's led to the insecurities for example food insecurity untimely rainfall droughts and even migration of people increasing of sea level cyclones and preparation okay cyclones and preparation melting of glaciers so melting of glaciers leads to glacial lake outburst flood and the cloud burst and you can also see about pollution and you can see like carbon neutrality and india's indcs and environment conservation okay so these are the very very important problems or the dilemmas whether we are going to resolve this in 2020 or not so how many dimensions we got 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 around 14 to 15 dimensions i gave so if you want to write the problems which are facing by india you can elaborate on this that's it then you will be getting enough points to write a 15 marker answer clear no doubts right and now let us move back and next topic is about floods and a preventive measure that needs review so this article is talking about floods in tamil nadu and please let me know how many of you are from tamil nadu so i know that good chunk of students here from this south like tamil nadu kerala and karnataka so how many of you are from tamil nadu please let me know your name and from where you are from okay so this article is talking about this cyclone mekong so because of this cyclone mekong and heavy rainfall after the cyclone mekong so here most of the cities in this uh, tamil nadu they had been flooded so this article we can connect with this topic called as urban flooding so we can connect this topic with urban flooding so you have to see what is this urban flooding what are the reasons for this flood in chennai what are the reasons for the flood in chennai and even you have to see like what are the mitigation steps and what can be the measures taken so all these are very important okay regarding this topic urban flooding and this article is important from gs paper 1 because we are talking about cyclone here and even gs paper 3 under disaster management so all these are very important and next topic it is about end game so this is talking about three party agreement which signed recently between ulfa and central government and assam government so assam government central government and ulfa they came up with the signing so that led to the end of the agreement which started from 2009 onwards and finally we are we are thinking that so there is a perception that there will be the establishment of peace in assam so we have to see this topic in detail right what are the reasons for this uh, violence or what are the reasons for this unrest in assam and you can move on so here there is one article that is about rise of ai chat boards in india's banking sector so this article is saying that about 80 percentage of banks in india they adapted this chat boards ai chat boards which are capable of engaging in conversations with human human users so for example if you are opening any website now you can see like chat with me box and they will be saying hi hello and if you have any doubts so please chat with us so that is nothing but this chat boards okay now many banks are using this chat board so it will be very helpful for interacting with the consumers okay so here you have to write about artificial intelligence in banking okay so here uh, whenever you are writing about applications of artificial intelligence you can add this dimension of banking sector so now here 80% of banks they started using this artificial intelligence chatbots clear 
And this text and context, there is one article regarding this OTT oversight. So especially starting, it is talking about Broadcasting Services Regulation Bill. So once it is passed, then we are going to see about the features of this act. And here you can see like a bridge to now where a hidden plight of diverted payment. So this article is talking about other linked payment system of MG Narega and we are going to see that in detail. Okay, that is the first article of discussion in the notes. And here in this news page, as I said, now Indian Navy is, uh, is coming up with uh, good technology. It is also going for a deploying of some additional equipment. So those additional equipment which is including like frigates, destroyers. So this will be very much helpful for the safety of vessels which are moving in this uh, Red Sea and as well as Gulf of Aden and Arabian Sea. So we are especially focusing on increasing of maritime surveillance and we are focusing on increasing of security as well. Okay, so this is our topic. I already included that in the discussion part itself. Yes, here there is one important article that is about lemongrass. So lemongrass meant to spread scent of change in Odisha. So I want to give you a lot of dimensions regarding this article. So this article is talking about state of Odisha, yes or no? So in this Odisha, we will be have a good bunch or like good pop, good percentage of tribal population. So we have good percentage of tribal population in this Odisha. So these tribal people, they will be dependent on this minor forest produce. Okay, for their livelihood. But what happened because of amendments in this uh, Forest Rights Act of 2006, that led to decreasing of their role in collecting this minor forest produce. So because of this, it is affecting it is affecting the livelihood. It is affecting the livelihood of this people. So now they came up with the cultivation of this lemongrass. They came up with the cultivation of this lemongrass. And it is providing alternate livelihood for this tribal people. So here in this context, you have to see some facts regarding this lemongrass and where this lemongrass oil is used. So what are the applications of this lemongrass oil? So these are the very important. Okay, that's all. So these are the very important topics that appear now today's Hindu newspaper. And now let us move on to notes. And if you want to get that notes, please do join the Telegram channel. The link is given in the description box. So this is the notes page. So only at most important topics will be dealt because the time limit is given for me is 40 to 50 minutes. I should not cross this uh, time. Okay. So because of this, what are the articles that I can cover and that I feel very important, I will be discussing. So because in the first itself, I will be giving you the overview of newspaper, right? So because of this, at most important topics, I will be dealing in this notes. So first topic, it is about Aadhaar linked payment system. So from the new year onwards, from today onwards, so MG Narega scheme, that is Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme. So under this, the payments will be paid only through this Aadhaar based payment system. So they will be using only this Aadhaar based payment system. Okay. So actually earlier they used to give them manually, but now they want to go to uh, transfer of their amounts to their accounts directly that can be done through this only Aadhaar based payment link system and this article says that 34.8 percentage of registered workers and 12.7 percentage of active workers they are still not eligible for this new payment system because there is no linking of Aadhaar with their bank accounts. So because of this rural development ministry data shows that 34.8 percentage of job card holders, they remain ineligible. So I think you may get a one doubt like how this daily wage earners, they will be made in the blank accounts. Yes or no? I think this is the question of you. So for this question, the answer is already our central government came up with this Pradhan Mantri Jandan Yojana and Jandan Trinity. Trinity is nothing but linking of a bank account with phone number, that is mobile number and as well as Aadhaar card. So actually here our uh, present central government, uh, it came up with this Pradhan Mantri Jandan Yojana 
so under this it led to opening of zero bank accounts for the people and many of them they got this zero bank accounts because of this pradhan mantri jandan yojana clear yes and if you are talking about some facts regarding this aadhar enabled payment system so a bank led model that is developed by this national payments corporation of india and this is an umbrella organization for all retail payment system in india and even this aadhar enabled payment system will allows interoperability between the different banks and even it enables any banks micro atm or this point of service device to access its bank account and even it facilitates the delivery of government benefits subsidies to the beneficiaries through the aadhar and it is a very simple secure and convenient way to make the payments especially who don't have even access to the smartphones okay or internet or formal banking channels so this is about this thing and if you are talking about the benefits so we have some benefits like it will be providing services 24 by 7 24 by 7 services across the country and even it is a free of cost for customers and it's it is nothing but interoperable among the different banks and service providers and even it is very much fast and easy to use and it promotes the financial inclusion and as well as digital literacy so these are the benefits and apart from that let us see some facts regarding this mg narega so mg narega it is one of the largest work guarantee programs in the world and when it was launched in year 2005 so which ministry is taking care of that that is ministry of rural development so this is at most important point and the important objective of this scheme it is to provide guarantee of 100 days of employment in every year to adult members from any rural households who are willing to do the public work and that to the work is related to unskilled manual work and as of 2022 to 2023 data there are 15.4 crore active workers who registered under this mg narega scheme and if you see it is also very much helpful to achieve our sustainable development goals so first one is it will be helpful to achieve this no poverty because they will be getting the uh, livelihood means and even they will be getting the wages and as one is zero hunger so because they are getting money so they can go to market and they can buy the food materials and as one is it will be also helpful for maintaining of their health and well being and even they will send their children to the schools now and as one is it will also helpful for improving of gender equality in society and even they will be getting some work opportunities that will leads to economic growth and decent livelihood and next one is it will be also helpful for promotion of industries innovation infrastructure and even that will helpful to reduce inequalities so these are the sustainable development goals that we can achieve through this scheme so it is very important and it will be like a 10 marker mains question and next topic it is about 16th finance commission so now let us see context why it is in news So, if you see context, it says that the government appointed former Niti Aayog Vice Chairman, that is Arvind Panagaria, as the chairman of 16th Finance Commission. Okay, and this 16th Finance Commission will be giving recommendations regarding the tax revenue sharing formula, that is between central and national states. So, it will be giving recommendations regarding how much amount of money that is collected that should be shared with the states. And if you are talking about some facts regarding this Finance Commission. so this finance commission in india is it is a constitutional body and it has been established under article 280 of our indian constitution okay and the primary function is to give recommendations to the distribution of financial resources between states and as well as center so center have to give some amount of the funds to this uh, states so how much that recommendations will be given by this finance commission and if you talk about what are the major terms of reference for this 16th finance commission so which things they have to be referred so first one is they will have to focus on the division of tax proceeds so the recommendation should be given based on the distribution of taxes between union government and the states okay they have to talk about the distribution of taxes between the central government and national well state government and even they have to focus on allocation of shares okay even they have to focus on allocation of shares among the states from the tax proceeds 
and they have to focus on the principles of uh, which guides grant and aids that means center needs to give some grant and aids to states so on which principles they have to focus and next one is they have to even focus on enhancing state funds for local bodies so from states how much amount they have to give for these local bodies so which are those local bodies we have municipalities and we have panchayats that is added through 73rd and 74th constitutional amendment act of 1992 so as in these local bodies are not present in our original constitution but we added it on later by this 74th and 73rd constitutional amendment act of 1992 and this one is they will be also focusing on evaluation of disaster management financing okay that will be also this commission will be also reviewing about so how much finance should be given to this disaster management initiatives okay so all this involves uh, based on this national disaster management act of 2005 already in 2023 there was question regarding this 15th finance commission so in this way you can expect a question so please let me know the answer for this question so please do try so actually i included the answer also so but you have to see what is the answer for this question and next one is the main question that i want to give you so i am thinking to uh, give you daily mcqs based on the current fights and also i want to give you one main question for the practice so that initiative will be started soon okay so like i will be giving you the five questions on this mcqs and one question that will be daily mains answer writing practice so we will be giving you the website link soon in the description box so uh, when it will be started i don't know that uh, today itself i got an intimation like include the questions and you have to make the questions so once it will be started i will be letting you know so that after watching this analysis please go to the website and you can practice the questions okay and if you want you can write the mains answer and you can post there in the website as well so that the evaluation will be done okay clear yes now onwards we are going to practice that so i think in this week we will be coming with that initiative soon and one main question which appeared in 2013 is discuss the recommendations of 13th finance commission which have been a departure from previous commissions for the strengthening of local government finances so here instead of 13th you can keep 15th or 16th soon so in this we also you can get a question okay and next topic is us navy sinks the three houthi vessels so i said about the topic right so now let us see some facts so us helicopters they sank three vessels operated by this immense iran backed houthi rebels that had attacked a container ship in the red sea so us attacked ships of houthi okay in the red sea so that is marshak hangshou a singapore flagged and denmark owned operated container ship that came under attack for the second time in 24 hours so in 24 hours here singapore led ship it is passing through this red sea which had been attacked twice within 24 hours of time so here us navy actions they came in the response to a request for assistance from the ship so actually from that ship here they gave the message to us that i we need some assistance that is help so because of this us came into picture and they attacked the this three houthi ships and here actually the ships they suspended the passage of vessels through this bab el mandeb strait in the red sea for 48 hours so if there is any ship which is moving in this area so they are being attacked by this houthis so we are talking about some facts regarding this uh, red sea so it is an inlet of indian ocean between africa and asia and it is one of the most saline bodies of water in the world so it is very very important and this red sea which is a linear sea which is formed because of plate movements that too because of divergent plate boundaries and if you are talking about the countries which are sharing boundary with the red sea so we have egypt saudi yemen sudan eritrea and djibouti so iran is using this yemen to control this red sea now okay so this red sea it is connected to indian ocean in south through bab el mandeb strait and also gulf of aden so in the north we have sinai peninsula gulf of aqaba and the suez canal and even it occupies a great part of rift valley that is afro arabian rift valley so this is the red sea here okay and if you see the countries we have saudi here is uh, we have jordan here 
and here we have Iraq and here we have Iran okay this is Egypt Sudan Eritrea Ethiopia Amman okay so they are the countries are sharing boundary even Saudi Arabia and next topic it is about floods and a preventive measure that needs review so this article is very important from your disaster management so please let me know what are the measures that can be taken to control this urban floods so please pause the video and let me know what are the measures first and one more request from my side is so if you are watching the video so watch till end so that you will be getting many many important insights because in between if i remember any point i will be delivering that point so because of this not only watch the video till the newspaper okay so watch even the notes also and one more thing here is don't leave watching this video without hitting a like button so if you are hitting a like button that will be like a compliment for me or it will be encouraging me day by day and so that i will be coming up with a much interesting content for you people okay so please do like the video so now let us see the context so why it is in news because of recent cyclone mekong that led to the floods in chennai region and not only because of this mekong but also heavy rainfall because of this northeastern monsoons or retreating monsoon that also led to the havoc so what are the reasons for this chennai floods so actually this capital city this chennai is the capital city of tamil nadu which is located in the rain shadow region which gets most of precipitation from this northeast monsoon so from this northeastern monsoon or this retreating monsoon it is giving getting the heavy rainfall and during this time it is also heated by this cyclonic storms so because of this it is receiving a very high precipitation or rainfall and in the recent years chennai like several parts of the country has been experiencing short duration of the spells at in the short duration of the spells they are getting very very heavy rainfall and chennai district administration has placed a large measures of the blame of sea pushing back the water through the canals and next one here is there is increased incidence of high intensity of urban rainfall that is within short duration and that is a one important reason for the urban floods in chennai and it's one is even unplanned growth of cities and encroachment of natural water bodies which are present in this region and there is a poor drainage system there are also some important reasons which are contributing for the floods and urban flooding is significantly different from this rural flooding because urbanization will leads to development of catchments and that will increases the flood peak okay and next one here is what are the causes so if you are talking about weather systems so here special feature of india is that we have heavy rainfall during monsoons okay so during monsoons and because of unplanned development and so whatever the area that is there so we are going for concretization of areas that is leading to the less absorption of this rain water and this one is dam water so whenever there is sudden release or failure of the dams so that will be have the severe impact and even in urban areas we are seeing this creation of urban heat islands so because of this urban heat islands the temperature will be very high so that we will be getting conventional rainfall so we will be getting conventional rainfall so if you are talking about types of rainfall we have conventional rainfall orographic rainfall and cyclonic rainfall so whenever the heat is increasing it will be causing the rainfall that rainfall is called as conventional rainfall that is highly seen in urban areas and this one is climate change and sea level rise so global climate change is resulting in changed weather patterns and even there is increased incidence of high intensity rainfall okay so all these things are the important reasons so what will be the consequences so the areas which are densely populated and people who are living in the vulnerable areas they have to suffer due to this floodings and even sometimes there is loss of property and loss of life and it is not only the event of flooding but secondary effect is nothing but they are also uh, prone to the much infections okay infections and that will leads to human sufferings loss of livelihood in extreme cases that will also leads to loss of life and next topic it is about end game that is about ulfa there is three party agreement agreement between ulfa central government and assam state government 
So if you see here, recently we came up with the signing of agreement between Ulfa, federal government and state government. So it is an end for the process that began in 2009, from 2009 onwards. So government is trying to come up with this agreement now finally in 2023. Yes, we got with that too in the last days, that too in the last week of December. So in the last five years, nine peace and border related agreements they had signed across Northeast. So in November 2023, so a peace agreement which was signed with United Nations Liberation Front in Manipur. So that is nothing but a meaty separatist group that happened recently. So the same way, especially the one problem we will be seeing in this Northeast is insurgency. There will be a lot of tribal people and this tribal people, they have their own organizations. So this is the problem. So in, if you're talking about insurgency in Assam, so Assam has seen insurgency in various tribal militant groups from 1980 onwards. So from 1980 onwards, we have the violent tribal groups or organizations. And this was even after Nagaland, Mizoram and Meghalaya, Arunachal Pradesh, they have been carved out of Assam. So even many states, they had been carved out of Assam, so even though the militancy which is going on. And the demand of this group, it is nothing but for the greater political autonomy and they want the separate statehood. So what are the reasons for this insurgency? The first one is ethnic minefield. So Assam region which is having a very long history of tensions between indigenous ethnic groups. Like we have around 15 recognized tribes in the autonomous districts of Karbi Analog, North Chachar and 14 organized or 14 recognized the tribes in the rest of the state and of this the major important tribes are Bodo they constitute 35 percentage of state tribal population and Mishing, Karbi, Raba, Kachari, Lalong, Garo and Dimasa. So these are some separate uh, tribals they are present operating in this Assam region. So of this the most sustained and violent autonomy violent movement of autonomy which is carried by this Bodo. And after that, Karbi and Dimsa group also, they are having their own operations. And if you're talking about immigration, so large scale of immigration of this Bengali speaking Muslims from neighboring country Bangladesh is happening. So because of this also, it is increasing the tension in this northeastern regions. Because as some people, they say that our identity, our uh, culture, our economic well-being is under threat because of this immigrants. And as well as even there are some political factors. So we saw like lot of movements in this region because of sub-regional aspirations and these movements often came in direct conflict with the state governments and even with the functioning of autonomous councils because ATTM okay so AAMT uh, so actually here we have this six schedule areas okay. Okay, so that is Assam, Tripura, okay, Assam, AMMT, okay, so Assam uh, and Meghalaya, Mizora, so they will come under this six schedule areas, okay, AMMT. So these areas, they come under this six schedule, so they are having the special provisions, right, so whenever there are uh, insurgents, or immigrants are coming from the Bangladesh, so they are affecting this culture of these areas. And this one is because of this economic factors, the isolation of the regions after partition was big blow to the economy of the regions. Okay, so because of this, there is a perception of exploitation of northeastern resources. Okay, so because of this, what happened? There is increasing of insurgency in these regions, which is happening. So these are the important reasons for this insurgency in Assam. Okay, so this is about this topic and I covered each and everything in the detail. So if you really like this uh, class, so please hit the like button and do share this video to your friends. And I will be showing you like where you can get the notes of this class. So this is telegram channel that is Rathod's IS classes. So we will be posting the notes every day here. So you can download the notes. And this is our website Rathod's IS Academy. So please do register with our website so that you can have the access to the different courses that we are offering. And if you want to watch the demo videos or if you want to see how these courses are there, so you can click on this play course so that three videos will be opened without paying a single penny. We are not asking to pay a penny. 
So, but if you want to watch, you can watch this demo videos. And this is our web uh, YouTube channel, Rathor's IS Academy. Please do subscribe to this channel. That's it. So, one request is please don't leave the class without hitting the like button. Okay, that's it. So, thank you so much for watching. And once again, a very happy year for all of you. And I wish you that your wishes should be come true in this year. Thank you so much for watching.